Hello and welcome to the channel where we try to bring you the news without the hype. We're going to move around a little bit today, but the first thing I wanted to look at was Ripple's lawyer, Stuart Alderotti, who says, remarkably, Gensler suggested that a crypto project retaining a lawyer is a security. That's wrong as a matter of law, not to mention common sense. And it's not so subtle and, out and outrageous threat to everyone's right to consult with counsel. It is absolutely insane what uh, Gary Gensler has kind of the rules that he's made up with things like, ah, oh, well, it's not security if it's sufficiently decentralized. Again, there is no law that has this in regards to security laws where it's got anything to do with decentralization. And also his remarks that if you use a lawyer, oh, that means that there's a team behind it to promote it. So it's definitely a security, i.e. if you're going to defend yourself, then by default, you're a security. But you kind of got to hand, hand it to the people that put him in power who wanted to damage this space because they're relentless with their kind of attacks and they literally just come up with stuff that people then kind of talk about and debate. And we've seen so much of this around the world where kind of stupid thoughts come into society and then you have to end up debating these kind of things. And it gives life, it breeds life into these things. And I think that's one of the things they've realized that it forces a debate and it prolongs kind of the, uh, the, the road of how this space will develop. Uh, and certainly it's held ripple back for almost three years now uh, where they haven't seen much adoption in the United States, which is a great shame. Okay, Lynn Alden. Big Mac tokens might uh, unironically be one of the better currencies out there. I work at McDonald's and we have these little cards that we give to customers when we mess up their orders and let them redeem the card for a free Big Mac. Just recently we received a box of these special coins. They are going to serve the same purpose. If you have one of the coins, you can exchange it for a Big Mac. It's the 50th anniversary of the Big Mac. Now I'm far from an, an economist expert, so this may just be a stupid question. But since our money has no value anymore since it was taken off the gold standard, whereas these coins from McDonald's are backed up by Big Mac, does that make them more stable, uh, more stable currency than our own money? Interesting food for thought. That is kind of the whole idea behind uh, cryptocurrencies. You know, the gold is no longer backed by anything. Uh, it was taken off the gold standard, so not backed by gold. And then we had the petrodollar and it is no longer backed by the petro part because Saudi Arabia left the left the agreement, the alliance. So I think that's why so many young people and as somebody who pushes videos out, I can actually see the analytics of the age of people that watch these videos. And it's typically young men uh, who are watching these videos because I think they see this as the only way they're going to get out of this rat race of a life. The only way they're going to be able to afford property and the only asset class that is actually going to give them the returns they're looking for. If you've got big money, the stock market might be good. It might give you three, four, five percent. But I think these younger people are looking at the crypto space going, the only way I'm getting out of this is if my money uh, goes up by a thousand percent and the only place that's that there is a possibility of doing that as cryptocurrencies. And I think as we see more financial turmoil across the world, on the previous video, I did a report of Japan where they're talking about uh, how the yen has dropped against the US dollar below levels that the their top bank said would never happen. And we're just seeing so much kind of financial turmoil around the world that it's just kind of uh, food for thought, really. Okay. Illuminati bot. Some people want a big house, a fast car and lots of money. I just want a cabin in the woods away from those people. I included this because I think it's funny, but also it's kind of my sentiment as well. Everything's got a little bit crazy over the last few years and you kind of just realise how the bad things that have happened in history, etc. I always wondered how, for example, in World War II, how Germany turned that whole population against other groups of people. And it always fascinated me how, yeah, literally how millions of people could be converted into some absolutely crazy belief, which is what happened. And it's what Hitler did. And over the last few years, I've quickly realized how that's done. It's given you a glimpse into how quickly the world can go absolutely nuts. And so I'm with Illuminati Bot. 
I just want a cabin in the woods where I can enjoy my friends, my family, and just chill out and get away from, get away from cities, get away from the main people. Okay, here is a video for you, Ripple versus Ethereum. Let me just open this up. Be careful of the technology you choose to get behind and invest in. Tribalism isn't the best way to invest. Do your due diligence. Follow people who provide real value to you on the X platform and then come to your own conclusions. It's your money. You decide what's right for you. And here is a short video talking about Ethereum. And on the other side of the coin for that, um, we have seen um, some news reports uh, occasionally that, for example, um, Ethereum um, was found to have some bugs in the wallet. Um, how can we mitigate the effects of open source technologies for companies? Um, is this avoidable at all, or is this just something we need to be prepared for? That's a great question. So uh, I, I would just say, generally speaking, if, if anyone is looking to get into the space, if you're looking at which technologies to, um, to actually use for whatever use case you're solving for, just make sure you do your due diligence. Um, just because there is a technology that many people are using that's uh, very recognizable doesn't necessarily mean it's the best technology. And it doesn't mean that it's even in kind of inherently good technology, I mean that it's, uh, it's scalable and it's actually secure. Um, I, I think it, it, it's safe to say, or my perspective being in the space for about five years, um, is that a lot of people are really religious about these technologies and they will just defend to the death whatever digital asset that they're invested in or whatever blockchain technology that they're using. But a lot of these people just don't really give that much thought to, hey, is this technology actually scalable? Is this something that's exploitable? And really just again and again, there have been exploits that have come out for a lot of these really popular technologies. And a lot of people say, hey, it's a feature, not a bug. It's definitely a bug. <laughs> I mean, this is, some of these are critical problems that are really hard to solve for. So I would just say, be careful um, uh, what you're playing with. Okay, an interesting video that gives food food for thought on many topics. I've always thought with the this kind of digital technology around the world, how everything's going to be digitalized. You've got CBDCs, you've got all these cryptocurrencies, and then you have warnings of cyber attacks like from groups of the World, world Economic Forum. I personally think the future over the next 10, 20 years is going to be very volatile for the world. Uh, I think we've seen kind of a precursor to that over the last few years. And then if you listen to people like Klaus Schwab, he will openly say you need to prepare for a much angrier world to live in. Um, people never thought that Luna could collapse. Uh, they thought, you know, there was so much trust in Luna. People had invested millions and millions. They were punch pension funds and everything involved in this thing. I think Luna was, what was it, $130 or something like that. Um, I'm not a an expert on Luna. But when it collapsed, it was absolutely devastating for so many people because so many people had invested their entire wealth into this space. And it does give you pause and food for thought when you kind of think about all these other technologies that are fantastic until they're not. And everyone likes to be saying, no, no, it could never happen with Ethereum. It could never happen with XRP. It could never happen with Bitcoin until it actually does. There was a great thing with Bitcoin back in the day. Um, my memory is a little bit hazy, but there was this huge threat to it that many people thought would absolutely cripple it. I think someone tried to create, it was thousands and thousands, if not millions of Bitcoin. And they actually had to do something that took many hours to solve and fix the problem of what had happened because they never foresaw this issue. Again, could this happen with any other coins? Most people out there are not deep level cryptographers. Um, so my personal hope for the future for myself and for the XRP community is that many of us can get in, get a good bull run, make some profits and take some money off the table and lead a good life. And I think during the next bull run, you're going to see a lot of uh, big money coming into this space as they always do. And hopefully we can uh, leave them holding a bit of the bag this time as opposed to them always leaving us holding the bag. Uh, there's a great saying in the crypto space, which is, make sure you don't become exit liquidity. Um, I think that's a perfect way to describe it. Okay, so this is another video. It's interesting. Today, uh, I think the SEC under Chairman Gensler has, has lost credibility with a lot of market participants, issuers, uh, investors, because of what uh, Mrs. Ms. Blass talked about, 61 rules dumped out on the market ivory tower ideas without any analytic or statutory framework to support them. 
he's lost respect here on Capitol Hill on both sides of the aisle due to his flagrant just ignoring the statutory obligation of cost-benefit analysis that actually stands up to a cost-benefit analysis, and his uh, flagrant uh, shortening of comment periods, which time and time again, uh, the members of this committee on both sides of the aisle have had to write and extend. And finally, uh, having lost in the court of public opinion, uh, now the chairman is losing in the, where it really hits his resume, he's losing in the federal court's opinion. Being accused of the commission of being arbitrary and capricious is not something I would want on my resume were I a staff lawyer at the SEC. Uh, and so uh, I'd like to enter in the record today's Wall Street Journal editorial, Gary Gensler loses again. Okay, so some people kind of just highlighting and calling out uh, in regards to his credibility on both sides of the aisle, uh, how he's lost public confidence as well as business confidence. I think most people can probably agree he hasn't done a fantastic job, like the introduction to this video where he's created, tried to create a load of rules that aren't even applicable by law. Gary Gensler is not a lawyer, and so when he comes up with things like, oh, it's not sufficiently de de decentralized, uh, in regards to XRP and Ripple, whereas, oh, Ethereum and Bitcoin are, so they're not a security. He's literally inventing stuff and also coming up with the ideas like if you have lawyers to protect you, then you must be a security uh, because there's someone there with an invested interest in that particular cryptocurrency. It's absolute madness what we have seen. But I think with these top level people, it doesn't really matter. They'll just move on to another very, very well paying job. We saw it during the last few years of the health crisis. Our dear leader, Boris Johnson, left under huge scandals with uh, all the Christmas parties, etc., and things like that that he was having, uh, where the public were very upset. But then he moved into a £10 million uh, pound a year job, or I think it was it was it it certainly paid him millions and millions. So it doesn't seem to really matter what they do. They will still get paid an awful lot of money afterwards. Okay, this is... Uh, I included this because it's funny. XRPP, he says, holy... S word. I think I just found out why XRP is pumping. South Korea's new president says we need to start buying the shit out of XRP again. So he's obviously making this up. Um, so if you're seeing this on X, uh, I can assure you South Korea's president has not said that. Uh, he's just having a little bit of fun, uh, which brings me on to the nice point of XRP is doing a little bit of a pump. Uh, this always happens around when uh, kind of swell happens. There's always a bit of kind of hype. And I think people are quite used to that in this space by now. Okay, next video is interesting. Unemployment just uh, unemployment jumped last month, taking out the last numbers holding off recession. Wages lost ground again, rising at just half the rate of inflation. The Department of Labor says the economy added just 150,000 jobs. One third were government workers. Most of the rest were education and home health workers. What's left was literally 10,000 jobs out of the 325 million. We actually lost jobs where people produce stuff. 35,000 lost in manufacturing, 10,000 in trade, transport and IT. This is the thing kind of with government structures is they can just all of a sudden use uh, the taxpayers' money, employ a load of government people and say, ah, look, we've got much more employment now because these people are, uh, are working. Um, in kind of government roles, health roles. And it just seems like so much of the political play is purely for political power as opposed to the well-being of the people. Fresh jobs numbers are out showing unemployment is rising again. With inflation already rising for three months in a row, that is the second shoe to drop in the stagflation hole. Last Friday, the Labor Department reported that U.S. employers added just 150,000 jobs in October, which barely clearing population growth. That was down by half from the previous month, and it was the second worst showing since the pandemic. It bumped the unemployment rate to 3.9%, up from 37 which is up almost a half point in just four months. As always in recent job reports, it's even worse on the inside. Over one-third of the new jobs were government workers, who of course don't produce anything, being parasites on productive workers who are forced to pay their salaries, Almost all the rest was education, which is pretty close to a government job, and healthcare, which is pretty ominous and again doesn't speak to future prosperity. By the way, almost 
of those health care jobs were low-paid health and social assistance workers, so these are not neurosurgeons. What's left was literally 10,000 jobs out of an economy of 325 million people. Meanwhile, we actually lost jobs where people do produce things. So 35,000 jobs lost in manufacturing, another 10,000 in trade, transportation, and IT. As Peter Schiff pointed out, if you've got more people collecting government checks but fewer people actually making stuff, that means inflation going forward. So more money chasing less stuff. Okay, I will bookmark this, uh, not bookmark this video, I will repost this video so if you want to see it, it will be on my ex, formerly known as Twitter profile. Uh, so I will repost that now uh, on XRP British Ball. So again, it's really, really interesting. There was a fantastic kind of report the other day where I was looking at the problem with all these BRICS nations working out a way to basically not use the US dollar because the one thing that America does is it imports all of its products. It doesn't really make that many things and it's so similar with many Western countries. They don't actually build anything. They don't really create very much on kind of a large meaningful scale. But the thing that they do export is the US dollar. So as soon as nobody wants that US dollar and they can start using their own currencies, the one thing that America really has is exporting the US dollar. If other countries don't need that, then they're not really exporting anything and they're importing all of their goods. So the future over the next 10, 20 years for America is we are in uncharted territory and during these times we typically see war as we are seeing now. It's just, it's just how the world works. Uh, whether you like it or not, it's just kind of the way it goes uh, and like he says in this video so many of those jobs are government jobs he calls them a parasite to actual workers because you're forced to pay your taxes the government takes this money creates a load of low paying jobs so then on their kind of reports they can go ah look we've created loads of jobs so government kind of government and people relying on government for their salaries i.e the health workers uh kind of making government bigger and bigger um, for me personally i think isn't the best way to go ahead for humanity because it just becomes so big and so so complex but that's kind of what we're seeing at the moment where government just constantly grows and constantly grows and becomes like a bigger parasite on society where it just needs to draw more and more money out of the system so there's and you know there's less people producing stuff it doesn't have a happy ending this i don't know how this resolves itself um and we will keep paying attention. This is why I'm so fascinated with the crypto space at the moment, because there is just so much financial turmoil, financial unrest in the world. Um, and one of the ways that so many countries seem to be navigating this kind of new world order, uh, which has been quoted by so many leaders now, including Xi and Putin, where they said they're going to create their own new world, world order and financial system. The West is trying to create their own financial system. Uh, just in the House of Lords, they were taught in England, they were talking about how 89 countries at the moment are either using or piloting CBDCs. We're very aware that CBDCs uh, run on the XRPL. Ripple, the company, has been doing huge amounts of work with countries uh, using CBDCs. We've seen the video of Palau where they're now running their CBDC on the XRPL. So kind of interesting times for Ripple, the company. I personally hate the idea of CBDCs, but it's just happening and good news for those who are invested in xrp and ripple uh, bad news for humanity is my take from that okay we're going to wrap it up after this one if you have 5000 xrp every 0 0.01 dollar is a 50 dollar profit every 0.1 dollar is a 500 dollar profit every 1 dollar is a 5000 dollar profit every 10 dollars uh, is a 50,000 profit and every $100 is a £500,000 profit. Now imagine if you had more than 5,000 XRP. I think a lot of people do these maths at home working out how much crypto they've got and oh, if it goes up by this amount, this is how much more money I make. And I think again, this is why the younger generation are looking at this space of crypto uh, in order to try and change their lives because uh, their financial future looks bleak. Okay, that is me for this video. Thank you very much for listening. If you like this video, uh, please hit the like button. It helps push this video out to more people. If you're new to the channel, then please subscribe. And remember, this is just for entertainment purpose. This is not financial advice. Thank you for listening.